What if I told you that house music and the number of chicken coops you see are indicators that we're in a recession? We all know the rule of thumb is that two consecutive quarters of GDP decline means a recession. We've already checked that box by this point, but how will you be able to tell? Like, for real real. Watch this Sunday motivational video until the end and see how many of these you tick off. Here are 15 street-level signs we're in a recession. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Number 1. An uptick in misdemeanor theft charges, usually food and other necessities. If you've got friends who are lawyers or work in law enforcement, ask them about petty crime and they'll all tell you the same thing. The numbers are going up. Recessions screw up the risk-reward ratios in the collective mind. And that translates to more crime for less reward. And that's why you see people stealing food, other necessities. And you'll see it in big cities as well. Crime in Manhattan, LA, London, and Paris has gone way up. In England, they'll rob you for your watch. In Italy, they'll give it back if it's a fake. While in the States, you get the idea. Another big sign that we're in a recession is the rise in the number of catalytic converters being stolen. It's basically 2008 all over again. You're about to see this kind of story a lot more often. Maybe you do already. Number two. Landlords kicking people out of rentals because they'll sell the property or move in themselves. The rich are basically restructuring their portfolios because they want to be sitting on cash. The folks who own apartment complexes are liquidating them. Some tenants will stay in, others will be kicked out in order to repurpose the building. The middle class real estate owners are downsizing themselves. Instead of renting out the space, they'd rather use it for themselves, and this applies to both rentals and office space. We guarantee at least some of your friends who are renting are now looking for a new place because the landlord wants theirs back. Number 3. An increase in people on LinkedIn laid off and looking for work. All of a sudden, LinkedIn is thriving with activity. Everyone is getting certification and flashing the open to work badges. Your friends or people you know will talk about changing jobs, about not being pleased with the workspace or that the company they work for is struggling. When things get real, people put their pride aside and just try to figure it out. People who hardly spoke to you or even badmouthed you in the past are now reaching out for work opportunities. They'll do anything if you give them a way in. You'll see an uptick in the traffic of job listing websites, as well as an increase in the numbers of applications toward quick financial opportunities and the number of toe picks floating around. Number 4. Used car sales overtake new car sales. In times of recession, people stop buying new cars. Why have a monthly payment when you can settle for a little less than you can purchase in cash? On the screen, you'll see the trend post-2008 financial crisis. And another street-level sign that we're in a recession is the increase in speeding tickets. Look, listen to this. A study that's been conducted since 1990 shows that a 1% point increase in the local unemployment rate leads to a 6.4 percentage point increase in the number of traffic tickets. Yep, because the government needs quick cash, the police are asked to stop more cars. If in the past you would probably get away with it, now chances of that are getting slimmer. Some of you might have even experienced this recently. Number 5. Apartment hotels are at a negative cash flow level. Let us give you a peek into our world. Some of you know that you can actually buy hotel rooms in certain hotels. You can live in them for a number of days of the year, usually about 120, and the rest of the time the hotel rents it out to its guests, generating you income. This is a great investment for people who travel often. A few weeks ago, we were scouting for properties in Manhattan, and when we found two one-bedroom apartments for sale in a well-known hotel and tower, it was the perfect location at the corner with Central Park. These kinds of apartments usually sell for one and a half million dollars or so, but these two were up for sale at only $700,000 each. 
great opportunity, right? Buy one, get one free kind of deal. A AAA property in terms of location at a phenomenal price. So we reached out to our agent in order to pull up the financial documents. We were expecting the financials to look bad, considering each apartment rents at an average of $700 a night and we've had a pandemic going on for two years. We'll share the information for educational purposes so you know how the financials look on an investment like this. Because the utility and maintenance are so high, the apartment is on track to lose money for three years in a row. Imagine owning an investment property that you paid over $1.5 million to acquire and it ends up costing you $84,000 a year and never getting to use it as the owner never visited. Even better, we thought. This means we can make a very aggressive lowball offer if the math checks out long term. So we asked our agent to pull the data prior to the pandemic. And here's what that looked like. Now this doesn't take into account that you'll still need to pay income tax on the income you can generate. If not, at least you can deduct the loss. Whenever hotel apartments are doing negative numbers, you can tell we're treading towards an inevitable recession. Cost of doing business goes up, and if you keep raising the prices, you become less competitive. Real estate is a cash-intensive business when it comes to refreshing it, and hotels are the most expensive to update. And that's how you end up with people willing to sell their liabilities at a loss. In times of recession, properties tend to stick around on the market a lot longer. You will notice for sale signs that stay there a lot longer than they used to. Number six, the numbers of people experiencing homelessness is on the rise. Have you noticed the increase in the number of people experiencing homelessness around? Property prices have doubled in the last three years. Wages have barely increased by less than 10% in that same time frame. Of course, people aren't able to afford housing, so the number of people on the street is going up. Here's an interesting observation. The reality of a big city is about 30 years ahead of their reputation. Meaning that when people from Europe think of Los Angeles, they have this Hollywood image in their mind that was established in the 80s and 90s. The Los Angeles of today, though, is a lot different than you would expect. This is what Los Angeles is today. And it's the same with places like Boston or New York. But for some reason, Miami seems to be thriving. On the flip side, though, Central and Eastern Europe has been booming, yet the poor reputation has lingered on. It'll take 20 to 30 years for the West to pick up on just how well emerging countries have been emerging. Number seven, employers are on a hiring freeze company-wide. You've heard of people who were interviewed, accepted for specific positions, and when they were supposed to show up for work, the entire company went into downsizing or a full-on hiring freeze. Well, here's how you can tell it's coming. If your boss or manager starts using phrases like, for the sake of transparency in meetings, you know things are not going peachy. All of a sudden, you start to see the color red more on your charts than before, and the anxiety coming to work starts to increase. Everybody is just a tad more stressed out than usual and putting more pressure on everyone else to perform. Number eight, an uptick in used and vintage product sales. A clear first-hand sign that we're in a recession is that the secondary market is booming. But when we say secondary, we don't mean flipping sneakers for 3x the drop price. Instead of buying new furniture, you're buying it secondhand. The demand for vintage or secondhand products is going up, and even thrift stores start to seem more expensive than you would expect. There's actually a great index for it. Musical instruments are usually one of the best indicators for recessions because they're more of a novelty item. You can measure how things are going based on the sale of musical instruments on the secondary market. Another strong indicator of tough times ahead is a surge in the listing of boats or motorcycles for sale. When things get bad, circumstances just make you get rid of what you need less. Number nine delivery companies as a litmus test for the economy. Another interesting way of looking at this is the number of deliveries per mile driven by delivery companies. If you're UPS, FedEx, or your regular courier company, you're accustomed to making a certain number of deliveries per mile driven. 
Now, we recently spoke to someone in the delivery business and he said that last year he averaged 35 miles for 150 stops. But this year he had to drive 50 miles for the same stop count. Many of them say it's worse than 2008 to 2009, mainly because gas prices have doubled since then and many retailers have been crushed by the pandemic or supply chain blockages. Actually, the amount of products and raw materials arriving in the country has dropped by over 20% in most sectors, compared to the same period last year, indicating that things are indeed slowing down. The economy of money is based on velocity, more specifically on the speed that money changes hands. We plan on doing a video on this soon that will shed a lot of light on why this is relevant in the context of a recession. Number 10. More people are starting side hustles for additional income. People are out there hustling. Everyone is selling something or trying to make something else happen. You know you're in a recession when people are selling homemade food on Facebook to make additional income. The entrepreneurial spirit thrives during a recession because people have nothing to lose, so they learn how to get things done. Recessions come with massive layovers, so people are reorienting themselves to freelancing gigs where they're in control of how much they work and can generate additional income without having to drive for Uber or deliver food. And you know, we want to come in and support our community. And for the past year, we've been working on a new experience called Freelance Mastery, where we hold your hand in the process of starting a freelancing business. It's in post-production right now, and we've got a waiting list available at alux.com slash freelance. With the rise in work from home, more and more companies will shift from hiring employees to hiring freelancers, no matter where they live in the world. So Aluxer, capitalize on this trend and make sure you're on the waiting list when the Freelance Mastery course drops, as it's only going to be open for one week. Go to alux.com slash freelance right now. Number 11. Gas prices and grocery baskets make you consider meal prepping for the week. Remember when your parents would cook and you would eat the same thing for two to three days? That no longer happens, does it? Well, with the rising prices of everything, people are becoming more price conscious. $100 no longer buys you the full shopping cart, it barely even covers the shopping basket. More and more people around you will start to meal prep. The popularity of YouTube videos covering this topic is a testament to this. Also, it's around this point in time when you realize just how much more food you can afford if you go to cheaper supermarkets. Number 12. People looking to rehome their pets, but shelters are full. Chances are you're one degree of separation away from someone who tried to find shelter for their furry friend. Now we're talking about pets here, not the other kind of furry, okay? Because of the homelessness epidemic, many people can no longer afford their homes and have nowhere to take their pets. The empathetic thing to do is to look for a new home for them. It's at this point you'll start hearing about pet shelters being overrun and not being able to take in any more. The problem isn't money, although extra money does help. The problem is the space and the ability to house all of these pets up for adoption. Number 13. A rise in smoking and house music. A first-hand sign that we're in a recession is an increase in the number of people smoking that you see on a regular basis. In times of financial hardship, people take more smoke breaks as they're usually more anxious. You probably know someone who's picked up the speed on their chain smoking. But that's not the thing that caught your attention with this point, is it? So why is house music an indicator of a financial crisis? Well, it kind of ties in with the smoking part and it tracks over time. Remember dubstep and Skrillex? Guess when they were trending and when the entire house thing started. You can actually see house music peak right after the aftermath of the crisis. Here's dubstep compared to pop music, which is a constant staple. And this is happening right now as well. The rise of retro house and Beyonce and Drake's latest albums are both house and techno. The reason why people gravitate toward house music in times of recession is the higher BPM, the tempo of the music. 
Basically, we just want the soundtracks to match what we're feeling inside. Now you know. Number 14. People are selling instead of donating things. If you check the likes of Craigslist, you'll realize that there's nothing of actual value that people are donating these days, and it didn't used to be like this. People are selling all kinds of weird things. And some people are just really creative with their spare parts. People are either selling stuff or giving it to family members for them to use. Repurposing is also trending upwards. Traditional donations have gone down while yard sales and garage sales have gone up. And it's not hard to understand why in a time where every penny counts. Number 15. More people in McDonald's and fewer people in fancy restaurants. You'll start waiting longer for your fast food as there's more demand for it. People will eat out less, and when they do, they'll focus on it being cheaper. As humans, we want the most bang for our buck, and this frame of thinking will be deployed across all avenues of life. All of a sudden, you'll also feel like there's nothing good on Netflix, Prime, HBO Max, or Disney Plus anymore, so you've canceled your subscriptions or you're considering it. From a ground floor perspective, your friends will ask you for money more often than they ever have in the past, or will be more reluctant to say yes to money-spending endeavors. Depending on what level of wealth you have, you will experience the impact of this recession differently, so remember to be kind to others. We've got a large international community, so it's time for you to add value to this conversation. In your field of work, what signs have you noticed that we're in a recession? Leave your answer in a comment because we're so curious to see how you're experiencing the economic slowdown. And here we are at the end of the video, aren't we? Well, not the end for those who made it this far because you guys are awesome and you deserve a bonus, so here it is. The more governments fight inflation, the more certain a recession will follow. Basically, the world governments have put themselves between a rock and a hard place. They keep printing more money to avoid a recession, which leads to inflation, which left out of control could ruin the economy. So in order for that not to happen, they try to slow it down a little bit, which slows the economy and puts us into a recession. To put things into perspective, in a new report from Goldman that we read this week, they expect the UK to top 20% inflation as official numbers. This will hit the population hard. The only way to not get wrecked by what's about to happen is to get ready and invest in the few options left that are hedges against the inevitable downturn. Last Sunday, we did a video on recession-proof investments, which you guys loved before being completely overrun by scam-promoting bots. But you are smart enough to tell the difference, thankfully. We advise a little bit more financial responsibility in the next few months. You won't feel it this year quite as much, but come January and February 2023, this video will be validated. Hopefully, you're not just going to survive this recession, but you will thrive in it as recessions are one of the greatest opportunities to build wealth humanity has ever seen. Where others see panic, we see opportunity. If you think the same way, write the word opportunity in the comments section. Let's just see who among you are ready to make the recession their playground. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time with us today, Alex. We're so glad you did. If you enjoyed this one, please give us a like, hit that bell icon to never miss an upload, and hey, don't forget to subscribe.